Hello there, and welcome to James Bond Radio. This is podcast number 47. With me is my good mate and Bond connoisseur, and some would say aficionado, and I would say scholar as well, Mr. Tom Sears. Hello, Tom. Good afternoon, Chris. How are you today? I am not too bad, Tom, thanks. Yeah, no, I'm all right. Things are good. Well, I'm a little bit tired. A little bit... Again? A little bit tired. <laughs> Again, yeah. Why am I always tired? It's because, well, July has been a busy month for me in terms of doing sort of active stuff. Mm. Um, August is going to be quite a chilled month. So, um, yeah. So uh, I'm, I'm in recovery of my ultra marathon. So I've had lots of ice cold baths, which which actually have been quite good. They're almost a bit... Have you ever had an ice bath? In fact, I I'm not having an ice bath. I just had super cold bath, okay. but it's not quite an ice bath. So maybe I'm cheating. But it's funny. You get used to it after a while. So like when you first get in, you, it's really hard. But after a while, once your your body or part of your body submerged, like after a minute, it's fine. Really? Um, and then you can like I, I can stay in there for like t- get a book, read a book, like stay there for twenty minutes or something. I I don't know if that's too long or not though, because when I try and stand up, my legs kind of don't work. <laughs> Do you know what? Uh, there's something I've been wanting to try actually. So uh, yeah. for the benefit of listeners who don't know, basically Chris just just did an ultra marathon, which is a double marathon, which is how many miles? Fifty. Uh, it was fifty. It was. It was. It was fifty. It was a fifty mile. So it's too miles. shy of a double marathon, but it was uh, quite uh, lots of ascent and descent. And Goodness stuff gracious like that, me! So. And all in one hit as well. All in one go. Yeah. It was. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Good it was, God. It wasn't pleasant on the feet. No, I can imagine. <laughs> um, so yeah, th- th- there's a thing over here in the states that they call, call cryotherapy, where you go into this room and they t- into this booth and they just basically freeze yeah. you really, really massively for like two minutes or whatever it is, and it's supposed to be really good at reducing inflammation and all that kind of stuff. Um, and uh, I-, I fancy having a go at it. It sounds it sounds like fun. Yeah. I know there's quite a few sports stars here that do it, like the footballers, the rugby players and all that. They have cryo chambers, but it's not something that everyone on the street can do. No. You know, that would be awesome. I'd love to, if, if there's an opportunity that you could do that, definitely do it it's just yeah. so we can hear what it's like and, Absolutely. Wouldn't you be a bit afraid that your uh, your John Thomas might be affected? Well, that that is what makes me. I was <laughs> going to follow up with the question: Is do, I'm, I'm sure you see a, a great deal of shrinkage from. Uh, from 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 a, an ice cold bath, so I don't know what cryotherapy would do whether that would take it to the next level or not. I don't know, but, uh, but there perhaps they give you like a, a a sock or something to keep that bit warm. <laughs> I would hope so. I would hope so. An extra large one, of course. Um, very nice. So uh, so to, so today on uh, on James Bond Radio, we have uh, a a an interview that you you went along to meet Nikki Vanderzil, didn't you? And and for those I did indeed those yeah. of you who don't know, Nikki Vanderzil is is sort of like an unsung hero of Bond in the sense that uh, she basically revoiced so many Bond girls, it's almost getting ridiculous. Um, everyone yeah. from kind of Honey Rider all the way through to Chew Me and, and I believe Moonraker was her, her last Bond film that she worked on. Yeah, that's um, right. yeah, so yeah. It's, it's one of those things, isn't it? How with Bond, those early films, like... Some, you, a lot of the time you have no idea they'd even been dubbed like when you look at Goldfinger he was dubbed you know by yeah. by Michael Collins yeah. and like sure. to know that that like that that dubbing is so good I never had a clue for years that Goldfinger was dubbed yeah. and it goes to, it goes to show like Domino was dubbed Tatiana was dubbed so many of them were dubbed and it's like you just don't know and considering how bad dubbing is in a lot of other movies where it's just blatantly obvious. Um, I think with the Bond films, it's just, it's next level stuff, man. I've, I've never seen dubbing as good as that. What, what, what do you think? Yeah. Well, well, we, you know, we can all thank our, our good pal, um, Norman Monstall for that. Cause obviously he did a lot of the sound editing mm. on the early Bonds. And part of that was not only the sound effects, but also in terms of the dubbing and fitting them in. Yeah. So it, it, it's it's obviously good work on his part, but in terms of the voiceover, in terms of the voice artist as well, the dubbing artist, the, you know, so the footage will be shot basically. They'll get to see a play of the footage, and they'll have to match what they're seeing. Now, to get it on the money, you know, because people talk at different speeds, mm. different pitches, and variations, and to be able to nail it. You know, and not only just to hit your mark, but to create a voice 
which lends itself to that character. Mm. Because as you mentioned before, like Nikki, if, for instance, in some of the films, she she revoiced like half a dozen characters or more. Yeah. And and obviously she couldn't give each of them the same voice because it, it wouldn't work, would it? Yeah. So, you know, to be able to create these voices to match the look and, and also to fit it within within the speech that that you see yeah. it's it's amazing how how they did it so successfully it's, that is incredible just... isn't it like you say b a being able to like sync it up so perfectly but b being able to make so many different voices i mean that's just unbelievable isn't it like how yeah. you would feel most people would run out of different you know you could do a normal speaking voice whatever you speak as normally yeah. you could maybe do a gruff version you could do a high pitch version yeah. and then after that you're sort yeah. of out of options but to be able to like yeah. to look at the number of different bond girls that she revoiced yeah. um and and to, i look at those those on screen and i swear they're that person speaking do you know what i mean yeah. it's like they're so yeah. different um, it, it yeah. really is quite remarkable. So, uh, so yeah. So uh, we've got a great interview with Nikki um, uh, coming up for you today, which is which is going to be great. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, but before we do that, make sure you come and join us on Facebook. Uh, which is if you just put James Bond Radio into the search, you'll find us. Come and follow us on Twitter, which is at James Bond Radio. You can also come and join us on the website where we have a little comment system where you can join in the conversation on there. That's always good fun. And you can always leave us a voicemail message as well. Uh, there's a big button on the right-hand side of the page uh, where you can leave us a message through your computer, whether that's a, a listener quote or a trivia question or a question for the for the upcoming mailbag episodes. Um, or if you just want to say hi, you can leave us a message on there, which is all, all good. And last but not least, we ha if you come to our iTunes page, and uh, and leave us a lovely glowing five star review. That would be lovely because that helps us to rank higher in the search and uh, get more listeners and and all that kind of stuff as well. Um, and last but not least, there's uh, there's the good old fashioned word of mouth as well. So uh, uh, make sure you spread the word, the good word of JBR to all your Bond fan buddies, and make sure they get on board um, and uh, and join the JBR family. Now, as I mentioned in previous weeks. Um, I, well, I, it, this is a bit of a sort of a, a, a back to the future part two in the sense that we've recorded this episode a little bit in advance because uh, I'm at the moment, I'm on my holidays somewhere in Europe visiting Bond locations. So obviously right now I'm not, I'm here in, in Los Angeles. But when you listen to this, that's where I'm going to be. I'm going to be mid-holiday. Um, yes. So I'm starting off. Uh, I'm going to some other sort of non-Bond related places as well. Um, but the, the first one I'm most excited about uh, for Bond is a visit to Prague. And we're going to be going to Carlo Vivari and staying in the Casino Royale Hotel. That has got me so bubbling it with excitement. Um, so that's the first port of call. That's the first night when we arrive in Prague. We're staying there. So going to take some amazing, yes. some videos. And, and you might even find me reenacting scenes. I mean, I, I think that's pretty essential. You, you've got to. Uh, you you've know, got to. I'm going to be running around the parking lot outside. Parking lot. Listen to me. I've been in America too long. Running around the car park <laughs> outside, um, <laughs> pretending I've been poisoned, all that kind of business. Um, pretending my name's Arlington Beach when we check in and all that kind of business. Um, that's going to be great. That's in the bag. Now, Vienna is the next stop on the trip. Um, so obviously there's some serious living daylights uh, locations there. So what, 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 where do you think I need to go in Vienna? What's the, the list of essential locations that I need to see? Well, definitely the sort of Prater amusement park has to be number one, doesn't it? Because mm. obviously you've got the, the, the Ferris wheel, um, uh, the one that Bond and Cara went on, um, I mean that straight away. That's a big one. If you can find like the row of bushes and perhaps like buy a load of coloured balloons yes. and just get you get someone to walk along with coloured balloons and jump out of yes. the hell, that would be so much fun. Um, I think I remember hearing that the Prata Cafe wasn't the actual cafe that was there, and I think that was a production thing. Maybe okay. maybe it is. I'm not sure, but it might be worth having a look if there is a Prata Cafe. And if there is, I'm a, it might not look the same as, as the one in the film. But mm -hmm. yeah, definitely hit hit that up. That's that's for okay, sure. Good stuff. Um, you can also go to is it the, um, what hotel does Bond stay at again? Is it the it's not the Grand Vienna or something? That's something I'm going to have to look up. I'm going to write that down. Yeah, Bond's hotel. Yeah, yeah. that's good. Because you see it at the start where the horse and cart sort of arrive, and then it's this big sort of palatial type yeah. hotel. Um, yeah, so that that would definitely be worth a visit. 
Um, I feel like I need to find uh, Koskov's bathroom window that he escapes from. Oh. That's going to be yeah. a top one, yeah. Oh, that's brilliant, yeah. yeah. And then if you can break into the building on the opposite street, yeah. and, then you, and then you can like there you get go. a good camera view from the, yeah. the Bond and Saunders where. Yeah. Oh, that would be, yeah. Oh, if you could find that's that, that would be so good. Yeah, good stuff. And I yeah. suppose the, the, the concert hall where uh, where Cara yeah. performs, uh, I wonder if we'll be able to Definitely. get in there and have a look around. I don't know, but uh, yeah. that's another one. Yeah. But that's one to pass out to the listeners. If uh, if you've got any suggestions, if you've been to Vienna before and you've done all the Living Daylights kind of locations, um, do let me know. Um, obviously, by this point, I'll probably actually already be there. So that uh, that doesn't really help. <laughs> but, uh, but there we go. Um, <laughs> This is yeah, this is my brain trying fire. to think in the future, but yeah. not. Um, but there we go. Good stuff. So uh, so yeah. So I'm going to have tons of videos and photos and stuff uh, from that trip. That's going to be that's going to be a good one. Excellent work. Yeah. I look forward to that. I look forward to that. That's going to be good. Good Lots stuff. So it's time before we crack on with the interview. It's time for the Bond trivia question of the day. Now. I'm going to go first. I've claimed it already. I've claimed my spot. I'm going to go first. And obviously the answer will be revealed later on in today's episode. The trivia okay. question of the day. <clears throat> yes. In the man mm-hmm. with the golden gun. Right. As we all know, Bond's fellow double O, Bill Fairbanks, is killed. What I would like to know oh, maybe, Bill. is what was Fairbanks' double O number? Okay, good stuff. Any good thoughts question. on that? Any? Okay. Do you reckon you were confident with that one? If you had to push me to say an answer, I'd hope it's got a chance of being the right <laughs> one. But I don't. All right, good stuff. <laughs> so, what's your question of the day? Okay, so my question of the day is: What was the name of the linguistic bomb girl who taught Bond to brush up on a little Danish? Oh, that is a good one. Okay, good stuff. And you get a, you get a bonus mark if you well name the film is. is I think you know what the film is. Anyway, yeah, but, um, yeah. All right, yeah. cool stuff. Cool. Excellent work. So it's time to get to know Nikki Vanderzil. Sometimes she goes under the name Monica Vanderzil. I've uh, I've seen that uh, kind of written sure. in places. Obviously the same person, um, but yeah. uh, but Nikki Vanderzil I think is uh, is what she usually goes by. Um, so you had some uh, some great fun uh, meeting her, and it's, there's there's a bit at the end which I won't talk about yet, which yeah. really made my day. When I listened back to the interview, it really put a huge smile on my face, which we'll uh, we'll talk about later. And you'll you'll I think you'll know it when it happens. Uh, but yeah. it's a good moment, good For stuff. Sure. Okay, so here we go. <laughs> My name's Bond. James Bond. Bond. James. Bond, oh, what do you think you're doing? Naming the British hand up, sir. Welcome to James Bond Radio. News, reviews, and discussion of all things 007. Pussy. As you can see, I have no problem with female personality. Oh, pipe down, 007. Do you expect me to talk? Oh, Mr. Bond, I expect you to goodbye. Honey Rider, Sylvia Trench, Benita, Jill Masterson, Domino Deval, Kissy Suzuki, Olymp, Marie, Chu Mi, Corin Dufour, to name but a few. All of these are characters that have been revoiced by our James Bond radio interviewee for today, Nikki Vandersil. Hi Nikki, it's a pleasure to meet you. Hi Chris, likewise. Um, now there's uh, been um, a lot of uh, talk about sort of unsung heroes of Bond and people who have been working in the world of Bond but they're sometimes in the background and they might not come to the forefront of um, when people talk about Bond they might not be the first people that they'll mention Um, but there are so many people that have worked in the Bonds where they deserve to have a mention and for people to know about them and the hard work they're put in and yourself obviously being one of them as well. Um, so we'll basically we'll go into a bit about the sort of work that you've done on the Bond. Um, but first of all, there are a couple of quick fire questions just to see uh, on what your thoughts are on Bond uh, at the moment. So um, just to start with the first one, do you have a favourite James Bond film? Well, I have to say the one that I like the best is Goldfinger because um, I was actually on the set. Oh, wow. Um, it was the only one that I was there throughout the entire film. Um, because I was coaching Gert Froh, who played um, Goldfinger. And so, um, yeah, there's a sort of 
um, a, um, a situation where I feel more close to that film than the others because the other ones, well, I didn't really get to see anything until at the end of the film. I was just uh, doing the voices. Well, being on set must have been quite an experience. Yeah, it was amazing. Wow. It's quite amazing. So. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if you have, have you ever read any of the James Bond books at all? Some people mm. have and some people haven't. But I, I think I did, but a long time ago. But a long time ago. Um, do you have a favourite James Bond girl at all? James Bond girl character? Mm. Potentially one that you might have revoiced there? Well, I like, I like the girl I revoiced in Thunderball. Oh yes, Domino. Yes, yeah. yeah, she seemed very nice. There's a good, ca- good, yeah, uh, good yeah. character that one. Yeah. Uh, did you do you have a favourite actor who has played James Bond? Well, I the ultimate James Bond for me was Sean Connery. Oh, I yeah. have to say, um, and we got on really well. And oh, brilliant. So yeah, you know. So did you chat to him? Oh when God, yes, there? yeah. yeah. I, I I met him before he was ever famous. Oh really. Well, I met him before he actually started filming Doctor No. Yeah. And he was lovely. He was a lovely guy. And he was a nice, yeah, nice chap. Yeah, a lovely guy. Oh, that's excellent. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's something I didn't know. Mm. Um, do you have a favourite scene from the series at all? Is there anything you can think of? Well, I suppose the iconic scene is the one when Honey Rider comes out of the sea. I mean, everybody seems and on your um, pod, iPod. When you're speaking about the anniversary, I see that you've got Ursula coming out of the sea. That's it, yeah. So, yeah. Quite an iconic image, that yeah, one. Yeah. Okay, so we're just going to go on to some sort of main questions now. Um, now, how did you first become involved with the whole world of voice redubbing? Had you done many films prior to Dr. No? And can you uh, explain to our audience kind of what's involved with that? Oh, that might take an hour and a half. <laughs> um, no, what happens? I mean, I, I was a trained actress. I trained at the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art. Oh, wow. And um, I, I obviously I was in plays and so on and so forth. And part of my, my training um, was to um, post-synchronise, to synchronise voices. Um, I, I, I actually was employed by um, Delaine Lee, who was very famous for um, doing... Or not, or not not just English to English, but mm. foreign films, foreign television series. We did a whole lot of things for the BBC um, in the 60s. Wow. Um, and because they were so well known, and it was Cubby Broccoli and um, um, Harry Saltzman mm. went to see um, the, the people running to Lee mm. and said, we've got an actress that we need to have posts synchronised. And they said, well, the, the only person who can do it is Nikki. Wow. So, and that's, that's how you that's got how into I the world of Bond. Mm. That's amazing. Mm. And obviously back then, no one knew what Bond was going to be. And you I assume you just thought, oh, it's just another job. And uh, Well, it was. It was, yeah. Yeah, exactly. it was. I mean, in fact, it was just another job all the time. Yeah. But, you know, I was quick. Yeah. They didn't have to pay me very much. No. Wait, so did you meet Ursula herself, or did no, you watch no, no. watch the footage and then... No, uh, um, you want to know how it's done? Yeah, no, definitely. Read the book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, there's a whole chapter as to how it's done. Yeah. Um, what Basically what it is, um, it's is, you've got to be an actress, mm, right? Yeah. You've got to be able to, to, to give the part the, all the nuances. Mm. Um, but then it's also technical. Because um, Ursula Andres was um, Austrian, Swiss, Swiss, sure. Swiss, yeah. Swiss, Swiss German, yes, yeah, and um, she was. It was very difficult to to get into it because she was putting the wrong emphasis on the wrong parts of the word, mm-hmm. and with post synchronization, you're looking at the lip sync, yeah. and that is quite hard. So you know, one one gets into it, but that it actually takes the longest time. Once you've got that, once you've got the voice. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was slightly lower than my voice, so I had to lower my voice. And then um, each se- uh, what, what they do is they cut the film into little pieces, and they do it all on a, is it a movie only? Yeah, something like that. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, and it's and then they have a line from going from one side of the picture to the other. Mm. And within that time, you must have done that particular scene or that particular sentence or whatever. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, it, 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 it's an acting job, mm. but it's also technical. Well, the amount of, t- well, 
the fact that no one sort of knew or recognised it shows what a good uh, and, and uh, professional people would need to be to be voiceover artists because you have to hit the mark all the time. And that the fact that people kind of almost didn't know you were there shows how good you were at your job in, in a way. Um, so obviously you mentioned with Dr. No, your work on that was extensive. Uh, now we sort of mentioned there Ursula Andrus, but you revoiced everyone, every female character in that film aside from Miss Moneypenny and Miss Taro. So that is a huge amount of work. Um, I mean, that must have taken a fair bit of time. It took about a day and a half. A day and a half to revoice everything. Yeah, well, that's amazing. That's why they kept using me. Yeah, that's amazing. That, mm. is, that is unbelievable. Especially for how it turned out as well. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. Um, now, there, there, there's something that I heard about which um, I hadn't actually heard of before. Um, there was a, quite a lot of controversy around the performance of Underneath the Mango Tree, now the song that was heard in the film, Dr. No. Um, Diana Coupland has long been cited as the voice performing that song, but I've heard from some sources that state that her song is heard on the soundtrack album, but in the actual film, it's in fact your voice singing the song. Is that is that true? Yeah, yeah. that is true. Yeah. yeah, I did sing it in the on, on the soundtrack uh, on the in the film. So mm-hmm. you obviously got a good singing voice as well. Well, I'm I'm actually a professional singer as professional well. Singer. I do. I I have sung concerts and. Mm. Yeah, yeah, and I still sing. Do you sing? Have you sung Underneath the Mango Tree at all lately? No, but I do sing Goldfinger. Do you? Oh, wow, mm-hmm. excellent. Oh, that's really good. <laughs> <laughs> Multi-talented. <laughs> um, so actually, speaking of Goldfinger, um, so in addition to revoicing Shirley Eaton and Nadja Regent, you were also a voice coach to Gert Frobe, um, who obviously played the title character. Mm-hmm. Now, quite a few people have heard that Gert, um, he was well known for having little knowledge of the English language. So how was it working with Gert, uh, and how did you find him? Um, was he a nice nice person to work with, and was it difficult because of his lack of English? Um, how, how was that? Gert was a great guy to work with. Um, I, because he was in his 60s, mm-hmm. and this was in the 60s, and my father it was a rabbi, and I'm Jewish, and all that sort of thing, we had to leave Berlin, because I was born in Berlin, I had to leave Berlin in 1939, my Parts of my family were killed by the Nazis. Um, first question I asked Gert was what he did during the war. Mm. And he said that his family actually hid Jewish, some Jewish people. And, you know, that was enough for me. And we got on really, really well. And contrary to what has been said, um, if he had had the short sentences... Um, at the beginning of filming, mm. very short set, and then gradually as he got into it, did the longer ones, he would not have needed to be revoiced because mm. he was he was post-synchronised by Michael Collins. That's true. Um, and I personally feel that if he'd been given the right treatment, mm. he wouldn't have needed to be revoiced. He was one of the funniest people <laughs> I've ever met. <laughs> we never stopped laughing. Uh-huh. Um, he he used to do um, a, a, a thing on, like he was a brass band, yeah. and he used to sort of pretend that he was having a, a trumpet and this and that, and he was absolutely hysterical. And we used to have lunches together, and we used to spend a lot of time together. And, of course, because we spoke German, I mean, I'm bilingual, so yes, we, we, yeah. we spoke German together. And, uh, yeah, well, he wanted me to come on to a Magnificent Men and the Flying Machines. Oh. Um, but by the time he'd finished Dr. Goldfinger, he, he was speaking English. Yeah, wow. So I said, come on, Gert, you, yeah. know, you can't have me. Um, he said, well, I can pretend not to speak English. <laughs> oh. So I say, oh, come on. You know. He said, lovely. Mm, yeah. um, that, you know, that's interesting because I remember in a trailer for Goldfinger, some of his actual voice was heard. And I remember thinking, that's actually... It didn't sound bad. It actually no, sounded it was really good. good. So, it was good. It so was. Is a, it is a shame. Yeah. I mean, the person, uh, Michael Collins, who dubbed him, still did an amazing job. Brilliant. Um, Absolutely brilliant. I mean, if you didn't know, no. and his voice was, you know, eerily like Gert's voice. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, he did a very good job. And that's not taking anything away from Michael. No, of course. But, you know, he did a brilliant job. Mm. But the point is that had Guy Hamilton allowed Gert to do the shorter little things, sentences in the beginning, yeah. but he put he, he pushed him straight into, into the, the deep, deep end. end. Yeah. yeah. And do you think um, Gert was having, did he enjoy his time on Goldfinger? I think he did, yes. Yeah. He certainly yeah. enjoyed his time with me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Um, Purely platonic. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, so obviously you've you've um, voiced many characters. Um, were there, is there any voiceover that stood out for any character that stood out as either being the most fun or memorable to do? Hmm. I mean, it is actually a job. Yeah. I mean, you know, you're you're, you're a jobbing artist. Yeah. But I could say the most difficult one was Yoko Tani yeah. in Savage Innocence with um, Anthony Quinn. Yes. Yeah. Um, it was a French. Japanese and American accent. <laughs> wow. And my God, it was How difficult. How do you do that? <laughs> it's a good question. Yeah. You know, you listen and you listen and you listen, and then you practice and practice and practice. But it was, was, was difficult. Yeah. It was difficult. I saw, um, I saw Anthony Quinn on Guns of Navarone, yeah. and I reminded him about Savage Innocence, but he didn't want to know. <laughs> um, what I've also found quite fascinating is not only the number of characters that you've done, but how obviously you have to give each character a different voice. So how do you decide what sort of voice you're giving this character? Do you do you look at how they look and how they act on screen, and then you think, right, I'll give them this sort of this sort of voice? And how do you differ differentiate between all these different characters to make them sound? Well, every character is different. Yes, that's how you differentiate. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, um, yes, you do look at the you do look at the voice, you, you do look at the person, you look at the character, um, and you listen to their voice. Um, so, what you want to do is to try to make the voice really fit the character. So you either go up or down, and it depends on the accent. You know, um, yeah, I mean it's. That actually takes the most amount of time. So before I actually get into the film, I'm actually practicing, looking at the, at the character, practicing the voice yeah. with with the person that's in the studio with yes, me, and we yeah. sort of discuss it together. Um, yeah. yeah. And so generally, when you were doing that job, what sort of other crew would you be working with? Well, Norman and 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 the sound people were just in the glass box behind me. Yeah. Um, and s I'm just trying to think. Peter Hunt was in, with me on one occasion. Don't think Guy ever came into the sound studio. Mm. But uh, yeah. Mm. yeah, So mainly the 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 director. It was. Or... It's mainly me. I mean, yeah. you know, you're the, you're the person doing it. So yes. you've got to. And then the other person's got to say, yeah, that works, or mm, try another one if you doesn't quite yeah. work. You know. Yeah. yeah. In January 2013, you published your book, which was titled For Your Ears Only, which I believe you have a copy mm, there, if you yeah. can show it. There it is. Yeah. There it is, For Your Ears Only, looking, looking very good there. <laughs> now, uh, can you tell us a little bit about the book and how that came about? And, uh... Well, I give talks. Um, you know, people ask me to come along and talk to their groups and so on and so forth. And every time I spoke to a group, People would come up after and say, you really ought to write a book. You really should do this. And so, well, I'm going to be 80 now in, in, a, in a month's time. So, <laughs> well, that's fine. But, you know, I am. And so I thought, okay, well, might as well. Um, sort of. So I did. And, um, there I, it is. <laughs> yeah. In fact, my German fans, which, which are quite phenomenal, um, are, have volunteered to translate the whole thing into German. Really? Wow. And I'm going over for Thunderball in October oh, to yes. Braunschweig because I went I, I went for um, from Russia with love last year. So and they they they've taken me to their hearts and cool. I go I'm I'm invited over. It's right next door to Hanover. Oh nice. So uh, with with the book that you've had sort of published and um, your website and hopefully potentially through the podcast interview as well, do you feel that you're now starting to get a bit more uh, appreciation and credit for the work that you've done? Um, do you find compared to obviously um, a few years ago where perhaps no one might have heard of what you've done, but at least now there's more and more people, do you find that's the case? Up to a point, yes, because there is, you know, social media and all of that. Yeah. Um, and um, I, I, I put myself on Facebook, mm. um, you know, hoping that sort of people might be interested and also want to see the book and things like that. Um, um, but, you know, I'm really quite busy. Mm. And, you know, it all comes up with comment and like and all of that. And I haven't, basically haven't got the time. And they're all lovely people, yeah. but I basically haven't got the time 
to be responding all day. Mm. I, you could be on on the, on the computer all, all day, day long, yeah. and I, I really I've got so many other things that I do right. that I really haven't got time to do that. No, so I hope people won't mind if I don't sort of. You know, they say they like to be friends and yeah. uh, fine, be friends. But I mean, you know, I've got my very close friends, yes, and of you know, and I'm not, I'm not quite sure about. <laughs> I know what you mean. I mean, it's the same for mm. everyone when you're setting stuff up. But mm. um, hopefully, with with potentially interviews like this, maybe yeah, we'll, be lovely. we'll uh, find a bit more about it. Yeah, which uh, you know will obviously uh, help sure. you out. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned you had a, a face a website and a Facebook page. Do you know what they are at all? Nikki dot dot co dot uk co dot uk okay great so mm. uh, if anyone wants to find anything yeah and what sort of thing is on the website is it everything yeah everything they want to know my paintings my poetry my 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 the other films that I've done my the, my 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 career as a barrister my career as a political um, journalist in the House of Commons. It, wow. It's all there. Oh, you've done quite quite a bit. Then. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes <laughs> oh, I've been lucky. <laughs> um, now very. Finally, um, I hope you don't mind, but what would be absolutely amazing for uh, all of our listeners, and for me uh, especially as well, would be if you could say a couple of lines from so, from one of the Bond films, maybe some of the lines for uh, Honey Rider, for Ursula, or if there are any that you... That you well, remember. now look, now look. Taryn um, Simon yeah. is married to Gwyneth Paltrow's brother, and is a very well-known American photographer. She's done various photographic exhibitions, and she did. She's done a photographic exhibition of all the Bond women. Right. Now, as you say, nobody told her about me, mm. right? She got to Paris before she went back to America, and somebody. I don't know to this day. I don't know how she found out. But I got a frantic phone call from Paris. Come over. We want you to come over. We've been doing the Bond women. George took me over there, my husband. Um, and she put me in front of a microphone. And I said a, ho a whole scene of Honey Rider's lines. Wow. With um, breaks for the other person to say the other yes, line. Yeah. So it's all on film. Wow. And I'm the only one that moves and that is actually acting wow. in that exhibition. It's been on in, um, what's the big place in, in America? Beverly Hills. Yes, yeah. And it's been all around. And eventually it will come to London. Wow. Um, so, you know, I will, you, you'll hear that. Yeah. Um, you remember when um, he wants her to, uh, Sean Connery wants her um, she, she's coming over onto his side, yeah. and he wants her to snoop oh, um, sure. on on Largo. Largo. Yeah. Um, and then um, they're talking together on the, on on the beach and so on. And then she shall I, shall I say her line? Oh right? yes, please. James, I only do this for my brother. Or and then she actually says, James, I do this only for my brother. That's because brilliant. His brother's been killed. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So you know, but oh, wow. it was it was nice. It was yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's nice to hear that live as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. Well, uh, it's been an excellent interview, Nikki. Thank, Thank you so you. much for your time. Thank you. And uh, yeah, now hopefully we can uh, get get your sort of uh, story and and uh, your hard work out to all of our listeners. They well, know. this is this is actually you know it's I'm not interested in the material things, no. but the fact is that you know. The reason I put myself on Facebook, I wanted as many people as possible to know that what I did was valuable. Oh, you know, it, it, it enhanced the various films. I mean, I did Ursula Andres, for instance, in all her films. Yeah. Um, what was the other one she did when she played the, the goddess? Um, no, she was in... She. Yes. And also with James Mason in... I um, can't remember the name of the film. It's on my website. She did Casino Royale, the spoof. They... I, I actually was, worked on that, was, and then they said, "We, it, her voice is so funny, yeah. we're going to use her. <laughs> so I did that. But um, uh, Michael Winner, I knew Michael Winner from Me High to a Grasshopper, and so I worked with, 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 with Michael Winner. And there's a story and a half, because yeah. um, I did one of the, lead, the leading ladies in um, Hannibal. Oh. Yeah. Um, and he had to go out and leave the room for a while, so 
the um, sound editor came into the room and said, you're telling Michael what to do. He's being ever so nice to you and bowing and scraping. What the hell's going on? <laughs> so I said, Michael and I go back to when we were teenagers and I used to boss him about it. <laughs> And it doesn't stop. It's like when your friends at school, yeah. you go back into the roles that you played at school, don't you? Yeah, definitely. And that was me and Michael Winner. Wow, that's excellent. Just a little. Yeah, no, that was very nice. It's great to hear. <laughs> excellent. Well, thanks again for your time. You're welcome. And uh, hang yeah. on, hang on. Blue Max. Blue Max. The Blue oh, Max. Blue Max. That's, that's right. I revoiced her in the Blue Max. Oh, she. Goodness. And Doctor No. Yeah, yeah, yeah brilliant. Yeah. Excellent. And there's a list of all the films on my website. Yeah, so. but that's yeah. another thing for anyone who wants to know more. Visit your website yeah, and then you can find out about all the other yeah, films as that's well. That's right. That's right. Brilliant. Thank you, Chris. Thank you for co taking the trouble to come over and interview me. Oh, you're welcome. It's been a pleasure. And uh, just could you hold up the book just one more time yep. if you want? If that's yep. okay. Yep. Voice of the stars. There <laughs> we are. Lovely. All right. Thanks very much. Okay. Thanks, Nikki. Okay, Chris. So, how about that? That must have been cool meeting Nikki. It was great, yeah. She was she was really, I mean, fascinating to hear some of the stories. She was great to s sort of uh, speak to and a lovely person as well. When, I think some of my favourites though, when she was saying about uh, Gert Fro being mm. on set, obviously they were both German. They're, they're, they're sitting in front of Stoke Poges having a chat about it. And I love the fact that she said that, like, Gert was really enjoy you know, loved his time on there. Yeah. And I think she was right, you know, you know there was that sort of trailer um where part of his voice was used in the actual trailer. Yeah, the gold finger trailer, yeah. 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 And obviously the guy that dubbed it, Michael Collins, did an amazing job and sounded just like Goldfinger himself. But um you know, he might have, you know, he might have done all right. But, um, yeah, I mean, a great interview. It's lovely to hear that story uh, uh, back in Goldfinger. Yeah. But just listing the amount of people that, that, um, that Nicky dubbed, particularly, I mean, look at Gold, uh, Dr. No, sorry. Yeah. Like, what? Almost everyone aside from, what was it, Money Penny and one or two others. Uh, Miss Taro, I think. Miss Taro and Money Penny were the yeah, only Ms. two. Taro. I never knew yeah. that. I learned that from this interview. So that's, that's incredible. Yeah. And again, like we were saying before, mm the amount of different voices you would have to kind of yeah. be able to do. It just boggles the mind how you would even do that. Like, it's just, yeah. I mean, accents is one thing. You know, you could do an Irish yeah. accent or American accent or whatever it is. But to make different voices is just, yeah. I don't even know how you would do that. Um, yeah. But I guess that's and why they hired her. That's why she was so good at yeah. a job is is because of that talent and that ability, I guess. Yeah. Well, and it's also like giving that character, like, for instance, Honey almost had like a tropical island sound to her, didn't mm, she? Yeah. And, the, and as strange as that may sound, it, it's true in a way. It's it, uh, well, maybe maybe that's just because of the visuals. I don't know, yeah. but I don't know. She gave you know, looking at not just the character or the hour, the actor, or the actress, but looking at the background where the character is and stuff all influences yeah. how that that voice is created. So it's a it's a lot of work. And it's, the amazing thing is, she was saying that. You know, she'd come in for a day, maybe two at the most, yeah. and you'd knock it all off in one you go. You would have thought, which is obviously, yeah, like, you you would have crazy, thought that would have it? taken ages to do, don't you? wouldn't you? Yeah. Just a day and a half or whatever. Yeah. That is that that yeah. does boggle the mind. My favourite part, my favourite part of that whole interview is when yeah. you asked her to perform a line of one of the Bond girls. And I, I, thought <laughs> I couldn't like, leave without doing yeah. that. I couldn't leave without and I, doing I that. I thought to myself, I thought because because sometimes like, a lot of people, actors and stuff, don't like doing that, do they? They feel a bit uncomfortable, and that's that's reasonably so. Yeah. And when you asked that, I was like, oh man, that was brave. And then uh, when she was <laughs> gracious enough to actually go and, and perform some uh, a, a domino line, um, that was uh, that was a great moment. That was that was cool yeah. for you to be there and hear it live, man. That yeah. was that's a special that, moment. I that bet. was awesome. Yeah. That was really good, and I, I was like, it was really cool to hear, and obviously pictured the scene as it was said. But I couldn't. There was no way I could leave without. Well, obviously there would if she told me to uh, yeah. to, to go <laughs> to bugger away off, yeah. <laughs> to bugger off. I would have had much choice, but yeah. I had to ask. And yeah, yeah I, it, was, it was great. A pleasure to uh, to hear that. Good stuff. Live, as it were. Well, uh, yeah. yeah. Thanks. Cool. Go out to uh, Nikki for for uh, giving us some of her time there and. Uh, and all that kind of stuff. So remember, if you uh, want to learn more about the kind of the process and the whole story of her kind of working on Bond and all that kind of stuff, you can buy Nikki's book, which is called For Your Ears Only, uh, The Voice.
Voice of the Stars. So if you go to Amazon and, and type that in, uh, written under the name Nikki Van Der Zyl, um, you can uh, you can grab a copy of that and uh, and learn more. And it's, it's definitely something that I'm going to do and uh, and learn more about because again, it's one of those things, isn't it? It's like those we said this when we did the the allies episode where we we looked at the kind of lesser known characters it's these uh, yeah. these people who are involved in bond and are so key to to a lot of them that uh, that don't sort of get the spotlight shine on them so much uh, it's good to kind of sort of dig underneath and and uh, and explore that a little bit in our bond fandom yeah. isn't it too right no definitely um i think in terms of contributions like voiceover artists obviously um you know people well it shows how good the job is is that people don't don't know that the characters have been revoiced. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, that, yeah. So it's all it's almost like the better they are, the less people are aware about the job they do. Yeah, yeah. Um, which obviously shows how good that Nikki was at her job, and also Michael Collins for Goldfinger and various others as yeah, well. Yeah, so, absolutely, good stuff. Yeah, good stuff. So Christ. cool stuff. So moving on, then it is time to answer our Bond trivia question of the day. Um, okay, I believe I kicked things off. So my question of the day was, as we all know, in The Man with the Golden Gun, Bond's fellow double O agent, F Bill Fairbanks, was killed. But what was his double O number? Ah, oh, may we, Bill. Um, so it wasn't Fairbanks, Alaska. Bill Fairbanks. I would have to say that it's not 001. It's definitely not 007. I'm going to go with a double O two. Well, Chris, I can exclusively reveal that you're absolutely right. Bill Fairbanks was double O two. Well done. Good stuff. He was. Oh, thank you. That was, that was a good question. Tricky one. I like the double O's. We yeah, love the double O's. Don't we, we do, don't we? We want to see more double O's. I want to see a female double O, the, the briefest of glimpse in Thunderball. You know, that's the only time we've ever seen anything related mm. to that. I want to see a female double O. Yeah. Maybe Madeline Swan could be a female double O. Maybe. I doubt it, but you never yeah. know. You never know. Um, but I would love to see a female double O. Or even just another double O sort of in the next film or two would be yeah. awesome. I just love I just love seeing that side of things. And Me you too. do too, don't you? Yeah. Awesome. I mean maybe maybe we will I do I do we haven't heard anything in the kind of the rumblings perspective, but I feel like Spectre is the big one, isn't it? It's like Spectre, yeah. the big reveal. It will be a good time to see a fellow double O agent getting involved. Yeah. Um, whether they will yeah. or not, I don't know. But I suppose we've only ever really once seen two double O's working together, and that's in the opening sequence of Goldeneye. So it's not like it's been overdone. So it would be uh, it would be or interesting to see. Pre titles of Living Daylights, so you had three of them. That's on the true on the training exercise. That's a good point. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Um, so, 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 yeah, but that's not even sort of really referenced all that much, is it? It's kind of like you only really know them as sort of double O, like obviously M is saying, you know, the double O section in the, yeah. in the, in the, yeah. the sort of lead up to that sequence. Um, but uh, but it's not sort of directly referenced as by their double O numbers and stuff. Yeah. But it's always yeah. good to see them. It's, it'll be lovely to see some more double O's in action in a future Bond film. Definitely. So, Please. moving so on. My trivia your... question. Yes. Yes. Now, this one, I think, well, you seemed rather confident, and I think you're going to nail it. Mm. But my trivia question for today was, what was the name of the linguistic Bond girl that helped to teach Bond to, to brush up on a little Danish? Well, you say I was confident. I'm blanking on that one at the moment. I know she was Doctor something. I know it was in Tomorrow Never Dies. I know she was very beautiful. But for whatever reason, her name has just left my brain. You were correct. Tomorrow Never Dies. She was uh, indeed a professor. And her name was... Do you know any Danish names? <laughs> it's uh, quite a Scandinavian name. Her name was Professor Inga Bergstrom. Bergstrom. That's it. Yes, yes. you of got there before me. Was. You're definitely getting that. Nice. Inga Bergstrom. Inga nice. Bergstrom. Of course it was. There we go. Yeah. All Excellent. right, good stuff. Excellent question. Good work, Chris. So moving on, it's time for the guess the quote round. So... <gasps> That was like <laughs> turned up to eleven. I love that full speed. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> I was just thinking that's what it will need to be once you reach Bond Actor like 14 yeah. in about, I don't know, 50 years time. Yeah. Well, no, not when we're on episode yeah. 5000 or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good stuff. Um, okay, so. Um, it was you, my your, quote last your time. Quote my quote. Your quote. Yes, it was indeed. My quote and last time was, quote was a one where the character was obvious, but the film was perhaps not. So my quote okay. was, "Yeah, I will not tolerate insubordination, 007. Hmm. Now, I'm assuming that might be M. You are absolutely right. I will not tolerate insubordination, 007. Now, for me... Out of the M's I'm thinking of currently, I'm leaning towards Judy Dench. I can say on the temperature scale, you're not cold. Yes. Oh, I'm not cold. Okay. Now we're looking at Judy. I'm not towards insubordination. Okay. Now I'm thinking Brosnan. Sounds like that's something she says to Brosnan and not Craig. Okay. Um, I'm not, uh, is that hot or cold? Or, or that's, is that that's, that's not cold on the scale either. Wow, okay. So I know it's Judy Dench. I think the scene that I think it's from is when after Bond finds out in The World Is Not Enough that he can't get access to something and that he goes down to see uh, M when she's in a meet, meeting with Tanner a few others and says something like um, you changed the password you had access in front of everyone and M's proper pissed off and then says your line and then tells everyone to leave or something like that or tells everyone to leave and then says a line oh maybe I'm wrong oh. well Chris I can reveal you're absolutely right well done it's when Bond, it to, it that's it. He's he's on his computer. He's trying to look up electricing and all that kind of business on the computer. And he finds that he doesn't have access to a file. And M's the only one who would could have revoked that uh, privilege. So he goes and challenges her in front of everybody. M tells everyone to leave. And she says, I will not tolerate insubordination, 007. Yeah. That's good. It's funny that because that's sort of a line where I'm sure was that done in Austin Powers? I don't know. Maybe it's it's one of those lines where you think you've probably heard it quite a lot, mm. but I don't know if any of the other M's have said it. Do you? Uh, well, I, I I think the obvious one to go to would have been to maybe License to Kill or something like that. Yes. I could, I could, yeah, that's what it sounds. Yeah, I to. could hear Bernard Lee saying that. You can just hear him yeah. saying a line like that, can't yeah. you? But I don't know yeah. whether he does or not. I don't know. No, but uh, no. but yeah, he is a, he's a, he likes a bit of insubordination every now and then, doesn't he, old uh, yeah. old Bond? So he, he does. He's uh, yeah. yeah, he's into that stuff. So have you got a quote for me this week? I do. Now I originally had a quote that I was going to do, but then I just changed my mind. Mm. So my quote for this week is, <clears throat> Mister Tom Sears. Mm-hmm. Oh, <laughs> that's my quote. all right. Okay, that's a good okay. one. Do it again for me, please. Okay, so <clears throat> this is this week's quote. Mm-hmm. That's a good one. I, there's one I know that from somewhere, but I can't pinpoint where it's you from. You will. You will know it. You will know it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. that is a good quote i like it excellent stuff yeah. okay cool so uh last time around we had a listener quote from jbr listener steve bachelor um as he mentioned in his original message i hounded him back in april when he came to the goldfinger screening um to uh to send a quote in and he, he finally did so uh so let's see what that quote was oh it's hopeless so, Chris, any idea on where that might be from? Now, when I first heard it last week, um, I wasn't sure. I, after hearing it again, there's something flicking somewhere. But I, in all honesty, um, I, I'm gonna, I no, I don't know what it is. Yeah, I um, must admit, he's got me as well. I've, I, 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 again, it's one of those where I'm like, I know it from somewhere, but I can't, I just yeah. can't place it at this point. Yeah. So. Let's hear from Steve again and find out what the answer is. Hello, chaps. It's Steve Batchelor again, calling in with the answer to my quote from last week. 
Um, so the answer to that was Major Clive from Octopussy, just at the point where he's been ripped off by Kamal Khan for the last time at Backgammon in a scene that's not entirely dissimilar to the beginning of Goldfinger. I wonder where they got the idea from. Anyway, I hope you like that. I hope you got it. I'd be surprised if Chris didn't. And um, keep on with the podcast. Keep on keeping the British end up, chaps. So there you go. I bet you feel yeah. silly now, don't you, Chris, eh? Well, I, I do. I feel very silly because as soon as he said it, obviously I pictured it straight away. But do you know what the trouble is? I do love Octopussy, but I haven't allowed myself to watch it for a long time mm-hmm. because of the podcast. So there's so many Bond films I haven't seen for, well, when do we start this? February 2014. Yeah. Now, within that period of time, normally I would have seen Octopussy at least twice. Yeah. <laughs> since then, normally. Yeah, nice. Every, every, every Bond film probably at least twice since then. And like, it, I don't know, I'm starting to get affected by it. It's bad. By the time yeah. we get to like the, the Craigs, I won't have seen them for a long, long time. Yeah. So um, yeah, it's tricky, but a great question. Great question. Um, but yeah, I feel ashamed. Good stuff. <laughs> yeah, no, he completely got me too with that one, Steve. So uh, so good work on, on, on that one. Good stuff. Next up, we have a new listener quote from JBR listener Martin Wiley. So let's have a listen to that. Hello, this is Martin. I enjoy every podcast. Look forward to every update. Right, so here's my listener quote. When the time came, I myself would have given you love. You knew that. You knew that! Right. I'll do that again in case you didn't understand it. When the time came, I myself would have given you love. You knew that. You knew that! Um, I used to be really good at impressions actually, but like, like I've not done any in, for any in the ages, so I'm a bit rusty. So, anyway, keep the good work. Looking forward to the next podcast. Okay, excellent. Thank you for that, Martin. Excellent quote. I think I think I'm reasonably confident I'm uh, in the right ballpark with that one. How how do you feel, Chris? Yeah, I th- I think it was a good delivery and it, it sort of reminded me of, well, I've definitely got the, the, the film and I'm pretty sure the scene as well. So, yeah, excellent good stuff. stuff, Martin. Cheers for that. Good stuff, Martin. Make sure you uh, call in again and let us know the answer to that one for next time. Um, and, uh, yeah, call in with a new new uh, voicemail and, and let us know the answer to that one. That'd be good. Cool. So, next up, it is time for the Girls from Music Q round. So, what have you got for us, Chris? Lovely, lovely. So, guess the music you now. Last week's, um, we we I, I went I went for a bit of sax, mm. a bit a bit, a, a bit of sax for for my good mate Tommy. Um, so now, a lot of people, you know, some not every Bond film has sax. Obviously, we haven't had sax for quite a long time. Yeah, this uh, could be done in such an innuendo. Oh, yeah, if only Roger was on today's <laughs> podcast, it would if the eyebrows yeah. would have gone through the roof, wouldn't it? <laughs> it would have done. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so I thought I'd bust out a bit of sax just just for you. Um, so yeah, it wasn't it wasn't the first idea that you had, was it? Because you had a couple of. I couple, thought there was two. There was two. There was. From Honor Majesties. Mm. Notice Majesty, I'm doing a bit of air yeah. sax for you there. I'm getting the yeah, fingers moving. I like it. And then the other one that I thought was, which I can't remember which one it is. I think it might be Goldfinger, where it's like, <laughs> Yeah, that is Goldfinger. Yeah, yeah I think it's with, with the Flying Circus. circus. I think that's yeah, uh, where that's that right. one comes from. Uh, so cool. I was expecting one of those. So, those are the two eminent saxophone pieces for me uh, when it yeah. comes to Bond. Uh, and, you know, sexy Bond goes on screen, bit of saxophone on the soundtrack, lovely. Yeah. But you chose a different one. So let's, let's have a I listen did. to that one again, shall we? Cool. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, so there we are. There's there's a little bit of sax just for you. What do you think this time then? Any ideas? You've got me a little bit because I feel like I'm listening to it and I'm I'm thinking of the scenes where you know hot girls show up and they play saxophone. Yet that one's not ringing any. It's not linking in my mind to any one of those in particular. Mm. It sounds like perhaps. It, is it a Roger era or a Tim era? It is indeed. It's, it's a, a Roger. It's era. a Roger era. Yeah. Okay, it sounded like yeah. a Roger era. Yeah, definitely. Is Roger. is it? Um, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Is it? Is it from Spy? 
it's not from Spy, okay, but you're very close. And also, there's is one one woman, so it's not like you know, like in Goldfinger, there's loads of them. Okay, when this bit of music is just Bond and one woman, and it's a Rog film. I don't think it's Man with the Golden Gun. It is Man with the Golden Gun. I can tell because of your face. <laughs> All right. It is Man with the Golden it's, Gun. It is indeed. It's from Man with the Golden Gun. Now, is it? Is Bond, it? Oh, woman, oh, is it when he finds Miss Anders in the hotel room showering? <sighs> no. Ah, no. Bollocks. No. It's, it's not with Anders and it's not with Goodnight. Oh. Any other women who he's with? Perhaps just before he gets into a fight. I was thinking. I was thinking, could it be the Bottoms Up Club? Uh, no. Let me just replay the entire movie in my mind. Yeah. Hold on. Exactly. You'll get to it. You'll get to it. Oh. Oh, yes. Does this woman have a magnificent abdomen? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She does. Very nice. Nice one. Yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right. Cool. Yeah. yeah. So this is basically as he's kissing it, going down towards the bullet. If you yeah. listen, to, if you listen to it again, now that you know that, you'll be yeah. like, "Oh yeah, yeah. That's it. all yeah. right, cool, yeah, good, good stuff. Run. All right, well cool. done, cool. So, have you okay. got a new one for us this week? We have indeed, yeah. No, um, so the one this week. Now, this one, uh, yeah, I'll be in. In fact, I'm not going to say anything about it. We'll all play right. it, and then I'll see what you think. Okay. Um, yeah, this will be an interesting one, I think. Okay, so now this week, I thought I'd ramp it up a bit and go for something that's maybe not you know doesn't get you straight away so what did you think do you uh what do you think of this one yeah that's that's a, that's a toughie i yeah lots of tinkles um yeah <laughs> lots of tinkles yeah yeah that's that is a toughie actually yeah it's it's basically just a bit of percussion and nothing else so yeah good good choice yeah. that was a a, a a good one to try and catch us all catch yeah. us all out Cool stuff. Yeah. So that's the guest of music queue round for this week. We will find out next time the answer to that. So, which brings us on to the complete the lyric section. Be arm indeed. <laughs> So for any new listeners, basically the idea of this game is to complete the lyric, obviously. So we're not looking for the name of the song or anything like that. It's the line that immediately follows the uh, the line that is posed. So it was your lyric last time, if I remember rightly, it wasn't it, Chris? It was. It was indeed. So my lyric, I think you had you had a, a reasonable... You're, you're pretty good, decent at these ones, um, so, but I think you had quite a good, uh, a good idea. So my lyric, which I'll do deadpan, is... You gotta do it well. Now, what do you think? Uh, okay, it, do you know what? It's funny. I know exactly what song that is, obviously. But Brilliant. when you deadpan it, it's like, what exactly part of the song is that? That's the bit that's difficult it, to lock into. Uh, you gotta do it well. It, what does it matter to you? Obviously, it's limited time. When you got a job nice. to do, you gotta do it well. You got to give the other better hell. Yeah! Woohoo! Very nice. <laughs> you didn't even need me to reenact it out. You yeah. could do it on my deadpan. So you get an extra bonus mark for that, I think. Thank you. Good stuff. All right, coolio. Excellent. Now, so, have you got one for me? I do have one for you, Chris. And again, you uh, might struggle with what film this is from. I know you do struggle with this sometimes. So yeah, I'm not very. So good I will. Ones. I you know I will. I will be lenient if you don't get what film this is from. <laughs> but obviously, we're looking for the following line. So my okay. guess, the lyric, complete the lyric rather for this week is for your eyes only. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Is it? <laughs> it's not. It's not. Um, <laughs> uh, for your eyes only can see me through the night. I think this is a trick one. I think you're trying to pull the wool over my eyes. You reckon? I think it's probably something like gold and eye because that's got an eye in it. You reckon? Or, uh, yeah. Or what else could it be? The, um, yeah. What is it again? For your eyes only. For your eyes only. Can see me through the night. Can through it see me through the night. Now maybe it's a film with a lot of night scenes in it. It's quite a few in Octopussy, so maybe. Mm, it could be. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's I'll, a brain I'll, teaser. I'll that thinking one. Cap on. Yeah. It's a bit like Sherlock Holmes, you know. Well, yeah. With a pipe. Got the hat on. I'll, I'll... 
Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> cool stuff. Yeah. So moving on to the final segment of the day, it is time for yes. Bond Celebrity Deathmatch. Now, this is a special moment, isn't it? Because this is the it final is. of the opening round of Celebrity yes. Deathmatch. We have three cars left in the deck. So we're having a threesome this week, aren't we, Chris? I tell you what, should I do? I oh, know. I'll wait until after. We'll do the we'll do the bit of three way first, mm. and then we'll look at everyone that's gone through to the next round. Okay, How about let's that? do that. Yes. Yeah? Okay. So, I no need to shuffle. No need to call stop because I've no. got them all right here. There they are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shuffle them anyway. Okay. And then whatever one I look at first is going to be the first contender. So we have in. Let's go the orange corner today. Okay. We're going for ooh, Mr. Carl Stromberg. Very nice. Not the most webbed mobile of villains, but yes. <laughs> no, but he's got webbed hands, so you never know. So Indeed. There we are. In the orange corner, Carl Stromberg. Now, in the purple corner, we're going for... <gasps> oh, my goodness. Here's hired henchman, George. Oh, here we go. Ooh. Okay. Now... Don't forget, he's he's paying his wages, mm, perhaps, he is, maybe. Yeah. So you never know. Which leaves in the fluorescent yellow corner, we have <gasps> Felix Leiter from Quantum of Solace. Good old Jeffrey Wright. Interesting. Wow. Okay, right. So, so Stromberg, Jaws, and Felix Leiter from uh, from Casino Royale, sorry. Not Quantum, from Casino Royale. So let's just discuss these briefly in order of drawage. So Carl Stromberg, let's see. Yeah. Physically, not that capable. He likes to sit he's down a lot. He's tall, but he does sit down a lot, yeah. He's quite old, isn't he? He's quite, he's quite old, so he's not going to be that much of a physical threat. He does have his secret gun underneath his table. A harpoon gun, yeah, he's He got that. does have his lift with the trap door in it. He and a pet, with a pet shark, shark obviously. Pen. Yeah. Um, and he does have a submergible base. Yeah. And a big tanker that swallows things. And a big tanker that swallows things. And he has the delightful Caroline Monroe in her helicopter. Goodness gracious me. Let's just nice. all pause for a moment and think about that. Okay, that's lovely. Oh, yeah, um, lovely. Then we have, Spent. obviously, he is Jaws' boss. So let's yeah, look at... Now this yeah, let's look at Jaws for a moment. Now... On the plus side of Jaws, very physically capable. It's very tough. Yeah. He's got a pair of steel teeth. Yes. He's probably not what one would call the most mentally adept villain. He's definitely yeah, a physical tools. presence rather than being sharp. So that leaves him open to being maybe outwitted a little bit. Yes, indeed. And then finally we have Felix Leiter. Now this is a tricky one because we haven't really ever seen phys Felix in a physical matchup. Um, he's not very good at cards, apparently. No. Um, so again, he's more of a mental presence rather than a physical presence. So how has do he, we do this? Has he been do involved we... in anything, Jeffrey Wright? I don't think, like in Casino Royale, he didn't really get involved in anything. Sort no, of... he was just primarily at the card table, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah okay, so... This is this. It depends how the battle plays out. Is this like a royal rumble? All three of them in a ring, charging into each other, or is is this more of a sort of sort of all against all? They all have their options that that, that are open to them. I don't know. It's a tricky one, isn't it? I think. I think if it's a royal okay, rumble, the... Jaws wins outright. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think so. so. I let's think so. leave them. How? Let's let them sort of have their. It's in an yeah. open world, basically. But don't forget as well, we're not going for the winner. We're going for the loser because two are going through. That's so true. Okay. In yeah. a Royal Rumble scenario, if George d does win, yeah. then out of Stromberg and Leiter, who would come second? <sighs> that is a tough one. Because we all know, we mm. all know that Felix Leiter has a, like a, a phobia of webbed hands. So if Carl Stromberg went up to him and started waving his hands in his face, Felix would freak and just run the hell out of there, wouldn't he? Does he have a phobia of webbed hands? <laughs> no. I was going to say, I was just wrapping my brain there for a minute thinking, is that something I've just never picked up on? Like, where's that from? Very nice. Well, I tell you what Felix yeah. would have a fear of, sharks. Yeah. Oh, yes. He's not too fond of sharks, is he? No. Now, 
And we've got Jaws and we've got Stromberg who owns a shark. So, yeah. so I feel like we've seen Felix do a lot of sitting down at tables. Yeah, which means Stromberg a lot sitting down at Stromberg tables. a lot sitting down at tables, but he has the advantage of a hidden gun. He does. I feel like Stromberg's going to come out on top of, against Felix today. What do you think? I no, I th- I think you would. I th- I agree because I think if we were looking at a Felix like maybe a Rick Van Nutter Felix, who well, what did no even he? What? <sighs> hmm. It's tough. Have there been any Felix that have been involved in... Well, David Hedison's been involved quite a lot, wasn't he? He was a more hands-on Felix, I mm. guess. Um, but yeah, no, with, with, with Casino Royale, we haven't seen anything aside from sitting down at a poker table, losing and having to and giving money to Bond. Yeah. Um, so I think Stromberg, you're right. I think, I think he would. Um, he would, with his harpoon gun and everything like that, I think he would. He would beat Lighter and obviously Jaws as well. Um, so, what about in the in the bigger sense? Is there anything else that Lighter could bring to the table? He has the might of the CIA behind him, I guess. Um, but yeah, I don't see that really playing out yeah. all that well. No, yeah, that's 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 kind of it, really. I, Felix and- isn't the most physical character. No. And we've never really seen him in combat. So, yeah, I guess it has to go Also, stronger. in this scenario, when we're doing the three-way, the fact that we have Jaws and Stromberg, mm. Stromberg will probably just tell Jaws to protect him yeah. and, just, and just kill Felix, and obviously he'd be left with Jaws. So, so I'm more inclined to think that those are the two that would actually survive. That's it. I suppose and, it's, and- yeah, it's a double whammy, isn't it? Because it's, they're going to team up against him. And that's yeah. going to be game over for Felix, I think. Yeah, I um, think so. so there we have it. Cool stuff. So, okay, so the final final two people yeah. going to the Champions League round is Charles Stromberg and Stromberg. Cool. So there we are. We have to say goodbye to Mr. Felix. See you later, Felix. Bye, Felix, you're over there. See you later. Absolutely. Okay, so while you talk some, some lovely Bondian stuff to our Shall I just shall I, shall I just provide some <laughs> elevator music just uh, while That's you're right, uh, yeah. do 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 screw do 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 I'll stop that right there. Um, yes. Okay. So obviously, what we've had yes. we we we've, we've had the first round the the the, the Champions League is uh, is now the next section of everybody who's won a previous fight in the Bond Celebrity Deathmatch. So now we're going to have to shuffle the deck and see who goes on into what, the finals. Go on. Before, before we do that, I've just had a count. We have currently 13 people in the next round, which means an odd number, which means I think one of our previous contenders who didn't make it through should get the wild card into the next round. Okay, so do you think we choose that person or do you think we do a random shuffle? Well, I'll tell you what. Should we should we do a shout-out of who they are? Because yeah. I know there's one that we both really do like. Um, and I'm imagining that as soon as I call these names out, you will probably... Oh, actually, there are quite a few. Um, I'll tell you what. I'll call the names out. Mm. And if anyone seriously jumps to mind we'll put them through right. if not maybe we do a shuffle and we see okay. see who comes up Sounds okay good. so this is in descending order almost um or is it hang on a second uh actually i'll do it that way no okay so we have felix leiter who mm-hmm. we know from casino royale we have dominic green of green planet we have mr wint and mr kid we have q we have Rosa Kleb. We have Le Chief. We have Nikros. We have Max Zorin. And we have Francisco Scalamanga. Now, there's some heavy hitters in there. Yeah, there some is. Heavy there. hitters. I would say the three big ones in there would be Nikros, Kleb, and Scaramanga. So, perhaps Zorin as well. Perhaps Zorin as well. So should we put those four into a pile, randomly choose one, and they go through? Yes. How about that? I think so. I think so, Okay, yes. let's, okay. Let's, let's shuffle so we'll it up and see what, what, we, what, makes ha- what we make happen. Are you, are you happy with them? Are you happy with Max Zorin in there as well, or would you prefer just your Absolutely. Three? No, I think he's, he's, yeah. uh, he's worth he a shot. He deserves one. He's a psycho. Okay, so slight. 
um, if I'm sort of doing all this, and are you going to say stop when we take the top card, or how are we going to yes. do it? Are you ready? I'm ready whenever you are. Stop. Okay. So, the wild card winner going to the next stage of Champions League James Bond Celebrity Deathmatch is... <gasps> I'm really, really happy because this would have been my number one choice. Francisco yeah, Scaramanga. Good the, stuff. The man with a golden gun. Particularly after, obviously, Christopher Lee passed away. And I think he more than deserves to get into the next round. Yeah, definitely. So there we are. Well done, Scaramanga. He's through. And everyone else, see you later. In this case, he does need more than one bullet. So, you know, Ooh, lost the first round. Yeah. He's reloaded. He's got his bullet back. Lovely stuff. He has indeed. Excellent. Okay, good stuff. So that about rounds out today's episode of James Bond Radio. Lovely stuff. Now, uh, like I said, we've recorded this one slightly in advance because I'm currently somewhere in Europe on holiday, having a bloody good time, hopefully, uh, and seeing lots of Bond locations. And uh, what we're going to do, because it's the height of the summer, we're going to have a two-week break. So there's going to be no JBR for the next two weeks um, because, let's face it, it's time to get outside. It's time to go out into the world and enjoy the summer and all those kinds of things. So we're going to put our feet up for a couple of weeks um, and then we will be back, obviously, after that. Um, so uh, so try not to miss us too much. We might um, might be able to get a, a location video up by then for my little jaunt to, to Paris. So on one of the weeks where we don't have one, I might be able to get a video done in time. Absolutely. Um, so hopefully there'll be something out there. Indeed. Um, at some point. So. But uh, also remember, you know, Facebook and Twitter and all that kind of stuff is still we're still going to be around on there. So you know, get involved and uh, and don't forget about us. Uh, you know. <laughs> We're not going forever. It's just two weeks. But, uh, but there we go. So uh, enjoy the two-week break. Um, and uh, we will see you in uh, in a few weeks' time with a brand new episode of JBR. And are we going to hint at what it might be? Um, go on, then. Can you think of a, a little hint off the top of your head? Well, could it be something that's... Uh, hmm. could, Actually, could it... Could it eclipse any of our previous episodes maybe i think it might do i think it might do um could uh, yeah that's a good one that was a good one i like it it. let's let's stick with that let's stick with that all right cool (laughs) so we will be back in a few weeks time until then i've been tom sears i've been chris wright and james bond radio will return have a good couple of weeks everybody and we'll see you soon enjoy cheers guys bye